Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to John. We're going to be reading from the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 11, or excuse me, 9 through 17. So let's attend to God's word for us this morning. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> so if you um, hadn't noticed from the, the pink carnations and the children's message, um, today is Mother's Day, and I want to start by asking all the mothers here to stand up. Here are my stand up. And I want to extend to each of you a happy Mother's Day. Um, and I'd like all of us to do that. So let's let's just. Jesus in our reading today. 
This passage that we read today, it takes place during that last evening that Jesus had with his disciples before the crucifixion. It's a passage that scholars have uh, referred to as the final discourse, those several chapters towards the end of John. It's kind of like this after-dinner speech after a big banquet. And during this after-dinner speech, during this final discourse, one of the things that Jesus does is to promote his disciples. They get this promotion from being servants to being friends. Think about that for a moment. What, what would it mean that Jesus wants you as a friend? In fact, what, what is it that, that you look for in a friend? As I mentioned to those in the front row, that's not a rhetorical question. What do you look for in a friend? What makes a good friend? Forgiveness? Okay, good. What else? Honesty. Honesty? Okay. We're, we're just going to go off the seat. I know it's hard to be. It's hard to be. <laughs> Understand it, yeah. Okay, what else? Reliability, <coughs> trustworthiness. You know, the thing is, when we, when we think about a new friend, she is someone who has similar interests uh, to what we have, someone that we enjoy being with. Your friend is someone who tells you about what's going on in your life, someone that you can laugh with and cry with. Your friend is somebody that you like to do things with. And your friend is someone you can, you can trust, someone who understands you, someone who extends forgiveness. A, a friend is someone who shares your values. And Jesus said to his disciples, you are no longer servants, but friends. So what's the difference? What does that mean to no, not be a servant anymore but a friend? You see, most of our friendships are not quite like our friendship with Jesus. Most of the friendships we make, we make with our peers. We make with people who are about the same age as we are, who come from the same socioeconomic background, the same, just kind of the same area that we come from. We don't usually form friendships with people that we've been servants to. But sometimes we do form friendships with people who are more powerful than we are. People that uh, maybe even have power over us. Years ago when I was a graduate student, my advising professor, Professor Gill, had a lot of power over me. He was able to say what research project I would work on. He was able to say whether the research that we did was worth sending off to a, a journal for publication. And he could even prevent me from graduating if he wanted me to. We weren't peers. Professor Gill had a lot of power over me. And yet, over the course of time, we in fact became good friends. And Stan was a good friend of mine up until his death. There's a difference between being a servant and being a friend, having have somebody having power over you, somebody with whom you have friendship. Well, what's that difference between being a servant and being a friend? You know, a, a servant doesn't have a choice about what they do. They have to do what they're told. Especially in this passage that we're reading today, the, the word that's translated servant, it, it more accurately means bond servant or slave. The servant doesn't have a choice about doing what they're told to do. And it's not the servant's place to, to ask why, to decide whether it's a good idea to do what they've been asked to do or not. She doesn't know the reason that something needs to be done, only that she's been told to do it. And if the servant doesn't do what they're told, they can be punished. And the fact is, some people approach their relationship to Jesus like that. They are servants. People who, who look at Christian faith as being all about following the rules that God has given us in the Bible. 
and are motivated more out of fear of punishment. They don't ask questions. They behave as servants instead of friends. But being a friend is different. You don't do something that a friend asks you to do uh, because you're afraid that he will punish you. You do something a friend asks you to do uh, because you care about them. You're motivated out of love, not out of fear. The goal isn't to follow the rules, it's to please your friend. And often, instead of uh, doing things for a friend, we often are doing things with them. And with a close friend, you have a sense of, of what to do together because you're used to it, because you've spent time together, because you know them. My best friend is my wife, Lee. And we've, well, we've spent a lot of time together. Um, and when Lee and I work together, like when we work in the kitchen, we don't usually ask the other to do this or not to do that. We work together enough that, that we kind of know what the other needs, how the other works, and what's going to be most helpful. Our working together is almost like a, like a dance where we each have a part to play, but it comes together as a whole. In fact, sometimes our, our daughters tease us and say that we're the same person. Because, because we're so used to each other that we know what to expect of one another. Lee and I, when we're working together, we, we participate in what the other one is doing. And that is what our discipleship should look like. In discipleship, we're working with our friend, Jesus. We don't work with Jesus because we're going to get in trouble otherwise. We work with him because we love him. Because we enjoy spending time with him. And because the result of our working together with him is something that makes us both happy. We participate in what Jesus is doing because we want the same things that he wants. As, it, as it's said in the passage we read today, we know the master's business because we're not servants, we're friends. That's what Jesus says in verse 14. He says, you're my friends if you do what I command. And he tells us what he commands in verse 12. He says, love each other as I have loved you. You see, we do what he commands as friends. Okay, we love others because we are his friend. We are Jesus' friend and we want the same thing that he wants. Because we know the master's business. We know that God created us and all of creation to be in relationship with him. To be in relationship with one another. And we know that that relationship has been broken because of our sin. Because we want to be God for ourselves. Because we want to be in control of ourselves. We want to be our own gods. And that is, that's broken that relationship, but, but God wants to reconcile that relationship and is reconciling that relationship through Jesus Christ. And as Jesus' friends, we want the same thing. We want that reconciled relationship. We want to be reconciled to him. We want all others to be reconciled to him. And we want creation to be reconciled to him. And because we know Jesus, because we're his friends, we know that the way to that reconciliation is sacrificial love. That we love others as he has loved us. And that's why the work we do together with Jesus is, is work motivated by love. Whether that work is coming together in worship. The word liturgy, when we practice the liturgy, the word liturgy literally means work with the people. It's work we do together with Jesus. When we pray, when we go on mission trips, when we do our, our school supply ministry, when we are seeking to be Christ-like in our interactions with others, that is working together with Jesus. Working with a friend. And all of us should seek that, that friendship with Jesus, or rather, we should be open to it because he tells us that he chooses us, not the other way around. And that, that promotion from being servants who follow the rules to being friends who want the same thing. 
That promotion happens as we come to understand that, that Jesus isn't here to serve us. Jesus isn't here to make our lives easy. Jesus is here to go about the work of reconciliation, and he invites us into that. And we follow him because we want the same things that he wants. That reconciliation between all of creation, including us and God. And that is something that I, I hope for you seniors as you graduate. I hope that you either come to know Jesus as friend or know him that way. I hope that you will know Jesus not only as, as friend, but as confidant, as companion, as co-worker. And that in knowing Jesus, you will experience what he asked for his disciples to experience. You'll know joy. You'll know his joy as you work with him. And so as you head out into your post-graduation lives, you're going to find things are going to change. Things always change, even after graduation. Everyone seated in here can tell you that. But, but you're going to notice big changes as you graduate. You're going to move out. You'll have new experiences. You're going to make new friends. And the truth is, you're going to grow apart from some old friends. But I pray that Jesus isn't one of them. I pray that you will keep your friendship with him. But like any friendship that you want to keep, it requires spending time together. It requires talking to each other. And it requires working together. No matter what the road ahead of you holds, may you always know Jesus, not only as Lord and Savior, but as friend. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.